right now a news conference going on with the sheriff of Tehama County as well as with the district attorney for the county and the FBI agent in charge uh, conducting the investigation there. Of course, uh, the federal government involved in that too. Also with us is Tom uh, Chiz, who is CEO and co-founder of Armored One, a security company that's based in Syracuse, New York. One of the things his company does is provide active shooter training for schools. Tom, good to have you with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Larry. So from the reports that you're hearing about how the school handled this, how did this fit the advice that you give your clients? Well, we were blown away here to see the news. Um, We hate seeing the violent attacks, but we were very proud of the school district there for their response to this attack and how they were able to save lives by barricading down and keeping the shooter out. And and uh, so sort of walk us through what the advice is that schools typically get to be able to respond to a crisis like this. So our company is a SWAT team and military-based company, and we follow the federal standards that's taught through Homeland Security of Run, Hide, Fight. We just break this down a lot more for the school districts and teach it on a level that they understand. And we further enhance that run, hide, fight that is taught to run, barricade, fight, because it's not kids playing hide and seek. When the bad guy finds you, when an active shooter finds you, he wants to kill you. So just hiding is not going to save your life. Barricading and making it harder for him to get to you and creating layers of protection is the big thing that we teach at Armored One. What about communication at schools? Because, um, you know, a teacher in a classroom doesn't necessarily know that someone has breached the school's exterior security and has come onto campus. What, what forms of communication do schools have for this? The uh, public announcement or the PA system is one way that they can communicate. And what we teach nationwide here is what we teach is plain talk. So with our police experience, military experience, speaking in code, does not work doing it during a critical incident. So what we push for is a plane talk. If the occurrence that happened here, he blasted through the front gates from what we understood and began firing at the school from the outside. At that point, someone should be on the PA that we're under attack, go into lockdown. There's someone shooting at the school from wherever his location was, near the main office, um, whatever his original location, get as much out as you can at first so that all staff and all students know exactly what's going on. I remember in the wake of the Sandy Hook tragedy that there was discussion about having some sort of central locking mechanism for for rooms uh, that could be accomplished from the main office or from another location. Do you know if any schools have actually installed those kinds of systems? We have been on a strong push um, across seven states right now, but our, our goal is to work nationwide that there's a security standard that's set by the government to prevent deaths in schools from gun violence. And that would one of those things would be having a good locking system and a good locking door that would hold someone out. And our, our understanding of what happened here in California, they did not have the automatic locking systems, and that, that system can be done right from a cell phone. A smartphone could put the whole school in lockdown immediately. And, yes, we do have schools across America that have been doing this, Uh, beginning the lockdown procedures to quickly lock their schools and not making it so a teacher would have to open the door and lock the door from the exterior um, in the hallway where there could be guns shooting, which is what happened here. We're talking with Tom Chiz. He's a co-founder, CEO of Armored One, security company based in Syracuse, New York. They specialize in active shooter training for schools as well as uh, equipping the campuses with uh, higher level security to try and and defend against uh, an attack like this. In this case, it's not at all clear that the shooter planned this. Um, It may have been a series of events that led a more to a more spontaneous attack on the school um how big a difference does that make in defending against the attack i think for this incident it actually helped them so a specific attack would be a student pulling out a gun in a cafeteria or a classroom making it more difficult to protect against when he randomly chose and did not have the pre-planning from what we are hearing that he just randomly chose a school their layers of protection and their their training and their procedures ahead of time is what save lives. The teachers knowing how to lock down and how to barricade, and if the shooter's outside, you're safer inside. 
If the shooter's inside, you're safe or outside. I believe that these teachers following these steps for their emergency preparedness plan absolutely saved their life, and it being a random attack and him not having a plan, God forbid that he had pre-drawn up um, having all the what-ifs. If he can't get into a classroom, is he going to breach the door? Is he going to have pipe bombs or explosives? What is he going to do? I, I believe this one was actually in our favor, and the school's work uh, prior to this happening was also a great thing that saved lives. And and so that this something that um, that teachers that are in classrooms that don't have doors that lock can do. They can they can plan if if something like this happens, what they can put in front of the door to barricade it. Absolutely, barricading the doors. Almost every classroom we have been in um, across the U.S., we have found that there's usually a filing cabinet in there. Strategically placing this filing cabinet near the door so that you can push it in front, that also blocks that window that's on the door so he can't see in it who he's shooting. And today was proof he could not see who he was shooting as he shot through walls, windows, and doors. Um, he's not able to get that line of sight on his victims to actually kill them. So he's randomly hoping he's going to hit someone. So barricading with that filing cabinet would definitely help and then using chairs desks anything that you can find and if you think about it too if you put desk across the room you go to a door and you put those desks all the way across the room to the other wall it's physically impossible to open that door because it would be pushing um, into the wall technically from those desks so you can create quick barriers to slow down the attackers and we know this from our military experience and SWAT experience when somebody barricades the door it slows down our entry and we're trained to overcome uh, barricades, and this the shooter was not. Again, just some additional information. The assistant sheriff of Tehama County talking right now at the news conference uh, said the shooter had two semi-automatic rifles and that the rifles were illegally rigged, according to the assistant sheriff. Uh, we didn't hear the details as to how that was done. Also said that the firearms were not registered. Uh, so that from the assistant sheriff also has just been disclosed by the assistant sheriff that the wife of the gunman was found dead in the couple's home. So uh, that, along with uh, the death of the gunman, brought the total casualties to uh, six fatalities in the shooting yesterday, and there are several others injured, uh, some of them quite seriously, after the mass shooting that occurred yesterday. Tom Chiz, thank you so much for talking with us about uh, what we're learning about the school and and how superbly the staff there handled this threat uh, to the students and the teachers there. Thank you so much. You're, You're very welcome, Larry. Thank you for having me.